fellow booktubers my name is lauren you're watching dream Swix courage and today i'm actually going to be doing a movie review of a book to movie adaptation which is paper towns obviously based on the novel by john green and even if you haven't read the book or seen the movie yet you can still watch this review because i will not be giving out any spoilers whatsoever first i wanted to mention that i'm wearing a shirt with John Green's face on it, which I think is very appropriate. First off, I love the soundtrack. I also love the soundtrack that they put together for The Vault in Our Stars. I feel like the soundtrack definitely does very well within the movie, but also just on its own, the songs are really good. And it also kind of plays off of John Green's personal taste because it actually has a song by The Mountain Goats, which is one of John Green's favorite groups, as well as a character of Q within the book. And then Nat Wolf himself, who plays the main role, actually has a song with his brother on the album. So this album is definitely made for this movie, and I feel like it goes along with the movie very well. As for the cast, I knew that Nat Wolf would play an amazing job as Q because he just seems to fit that kind of character in the first place. He looks kind of nerdy and like you wouldn't really be popular in high school, which is kind of stereotyping him to say, but that makes him perfect for this role. And then we have Cara Delevingne, which I've known about for a long time because she's actually a British model. And I was very worried about how her accent would do since she is British and she has to play an American role. Also, this was her first film, but I think that she did a very good job of it. She's also supposed to be this beautiful, untouchable thing. She obviously has a lot of experience in that department because she is a model. And so I think that this part fitted her very well, even though I didn't necessarily like the accent that she had. There's not really much you can do, considering that that's not her, like, actual accent. As for the rest of the main cast, I thought that they all did a great job, and I really enjoyed how they played the parts. Now let's get more into the movie. I felt like this movie was quite honest to the original book, although some things were changed and characters were added in different places. I feel like overall this movie did a very good job about explaining the mood and the tone within the book of Paper Towns. Within the book, there are three main parts, the first part being more just a contemporary romance sort of thing, the second part being a mystery, and the third part being a road trip. All three of these parts have about an equal amount of time within the novel, and those amounts of times were not equal within the movie. First we have the contemporary romance part, and I do think that this had a good amount of time on screen, except for in the book they actually did go to SeaWorld on the night whenever Marco and Q decided to have this crazy adventure, and I felt like that was a very nice touch that was put into the book, and I wish I would have been able to see that in a movie format. Maybe they couldn't get SeaWorld to agree to that, but I feel like they could have made their own fictitious theme park and then snuck into that. Either way, I think that would have been a really cool part to see on screen, but overall I do think that they did a very good job with this part and a lot of the parts were very accurate. Although some of the pranks were a bit different, it didn't really change anything about the overall story. And then we have the mystery part, and whenever I read the book, the mystery part seemed like it was the longest part of the novel, but within this it seemed like a very, very small part. There's a lot more mystery that happens in the book. For a long time I thought that Marco was dead and he goes and he searches all these places trying to find her. But within the movie, he only really goes to one place. I feel like the resolution within that part was kind of a bit too easy, but it's okay since I guess they didn't really think that the mystery part was very interesting within the book and that it wouldn't do very well on screen. And then we have the road trip part, which was definitely the best part of this movie. I felt like it was done very well. There were really a lot of funny moments throughout this movie, but especially within the road trip part, I really liked how they did it. And I also liked how the character of Angela, who wasn't on the road trip within the book, was in the movie. I felt like her character did add a lot and her character was more in depth throughout the movie. I really liked Ansel Elgort's cameo. I didn't know he had a cameo in the movie but I thought that it was done very well. And I didn't see John Green's cameo which I was really sad about so I guess I'll have to watch it again sometime to see his cameo but I really wanted to see it and I was like looking for it throughout the entire movie. I think that John Green probably should have gotten a bigger cameo like Ansel did considering that this movie is based on his book and also that his cameo was cut out of his other movie, but oh well. I didn't like some of the lines that they added into the movie. I thought that they were very cheesy, but they overall did a good job and they did have some of the more important lines within the movie, which was definitely something that I wanted to happen. As for the resolution at the end, I felt like it wasn't nearly as good as it was in the book. It held a lot of meaning within the book, and within the movie, I felt like it was just done too fast. It wasn't done at all like it was done in the book. And to me, it was the most important part of the entire book, so I just kind of wish they had more of that within the movie. It wouldn't have been boring or anything. It just would have been more deep, and maybe that was too much to put in this movie. I don't know. But it definitely did feel rushed, and there just wasn't a lot of depth at all at the resolution. The other thing that annoyed me was that they had to rush this road trip because they all wanted to go to prom but that's not what happened at all in the book. They actually skipped their graduation in order to go on this road trip. 
and they had to hurry because they didn't know how long Margot was staying in Aglo or whether she was gonna kill herself if she wasn't there. So that was just a huge change and I feel like that made the movie seem more superficial because this was all based on prom which really isn't that big of a deal whatsoever and that made these characters seem more selfish and superficial. Overall I think that this movie was done very well and it looks very nice on screen although it doesn't have a lot of depth to it, so I think it's a nice feel-good movie. Although I definitely don't think it's as good as The Fault in Our Stars was. If I had to give this movie a rating, I'd probably give it 4 out of 5 stars in terms of a book-to-movie adaptation, but if I was just giving it a movie rating, I'd give it 5 stars. No matter if you want to watch the movie or you have watched the movie, I would still definitely recommend that you read this book because it's very good and very well done. There are just as many funny moments, but there's even more depth to the story, and I think that's a very important part of what makes this such a good novel. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I would love to know your thoughts on it down below. And now I'm going to go get back to reading.